This is an African-American owned bakery in Tokyo, Japan. We're gonna go there right now to hear Kyle's story. So stay tuned for that. Welcome to Kyle's Good Finds. Just take one slice. Since carrot cake is most popular, that's the one that I, I make more than one of generally. Everything else I just make one cake. And that's it basically. I tell people my cakes are not pretty, it's just a simple, a simple cake, that's all. who've been having carrot cake for 25 years. I had, a, I had a young Japanese come in, newly married with his wife who's vis visibly pregnant with their first child. He said he had my cake as a child himself. And then he said when his first child was born, that's going to be his child's first birthday cake. And his wife was tearing up. Oh, wow. <laughs> but that's not the first time though. Two or three times, two or three generations have, have come in having my cake. And I've made some birthday cakes for some kids for like the 25 years. <laughs> wow, it's, it's amazing. One thing about my bakery that I think is different from other bakeries, everything in the shop has gone through my hands. I make everything, so you know where something is coming from. I mean, I put love in, in all cakes, but if it's somebody I know, I, I guess it's extra love into the cake. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of The Melanated Fuzz. My name is Ranzo and tonight I'm joined by Kyle from Kyle's Good Finds located in Nakano in Tokyo, Japan. He is an African-American baker in Japan. He's been here for over 30 years. So we're gonna get into his story right now. Kyle. My name is Kyle Sexton. I've been in Japan since December 26, 1984. I'm from uh, York, Pennsylvania, but I came here from New York City. I first came here to live, had no idea that I was going to bake or anything. I just taught myself baking after I came here. I always wanted to be a restaurateur, so I was always interested in food. So tell me, how did you start the bakery? I had no idea that I was about starting a bakery. Yeah. I came and I was teaching, teaching English at first. Mm -hmm. I was baking cakes as a sideline. I, I would go to parties and I would bring a carrot cake or I was selling cakes to Japanese who came from America and wanted an authentic American cake. Mm -hmm. When I say authentic, I mean I follow the recipes as they are in the American cookbooks. Everything mm -hmm. you read about Japan and the food industry says that you have to change your taste to fit the Japanese market. But from day one, I was never going to do that. Mm -hmm. Even if I had to find a specialized customer who wanted an authentic cake, that's what I was going to go for, but it wasn't necessary. My regular customer is a Japanese housewife, mm -hmm. and they just like it the way it is. Okay. Well, I suppose they do. They always ask, is it sweet? Am I this kind? I say yes, but they still buy it. Yeah. And they come back, so. I heard a fascinating story of how your friends helped you to start. I had no, no plans to start a bakery. Of course, I was, people knew that I baked and, mm -hmm. and people liked my carrot cake. Out of the blue, three Japanese friends decided to lend me one million yen each. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another group of friends actually found the actual spot for me. Mm -hmm. So they sort of pushed me into it. Okay. So, so now I tell people, Everything you read about a business in Japan, is, it, it says the three most important things are location, location, location. But in my case, it didn't matter. I mean, I, I got this place just by dumb luck, so mm -hmm. my location, it wasn't all that important. Okay. But I tell people, unlike other bakeries, I'm not that dependent on just walking customers. Mm -hmm. Because I ship out things, and back then, I was taking cakes all over Tokyo by hand. Mm -hmm. but also, when I first came here, I would, I would see like mom and pop stores and I would see no customers going and I was wondering why 
how can they stay in business? But you can't always tell mm -hmm. whether somebody is making money by how many people go in. True. But these days I see shops closing after six months and I wonder how they can know after six months mm -hmm. why they just folded up. But I suppose mm -hmm. people tell me because somebody else is backing them and the person doesn't want to keep losing money, but I never had any backers. Okay. The three people who lent me money, I paid them off within one year. Okay. I mean, they lent me money and then the rest of the money was me and my, and my wife's money. Well, mm -hmm. probably my wife's money mainly because mm -hmm. I didn't have any money back then. I'm sure my wife didn't think that Japanese would come in here and buy cakes, but okay. we've been successful from day one. Okay, mm. wow. So did you communicate a desire to start a shop or any business no. endeavor at all? No. They just <laughs> no, they just spoke amongst themselves and said, well, you know, we're going to talk to they didn't, they didn't know each other, so... Oh, wait, wait, wait. So wait how, two of them knew each other. So how did that happen? Like I don't... I don't oh, wait, so one yeah. day two came with a million in each for the bakery and then another person who's not connected just came like how did that well years ago i was in an organization called jaffa mm -hmm. japan afro-american friendship association okay whose goal was to learn from the japanese and and expose the japanese to african-american culture in general mm -hmm. there was a group of uh there was a group called Saturday School, mm -hmm. which was a group of mothers in Nakanaku. Every Saturday, they would take the kids to one of the mother's houses, and they had what they called Saturday School. Mm -hmm. They wanted to expose their kids to different cultures. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one, so once when they chose about Black American culture, they contacted Jaffa, and after after that, then I became me and me and my wife became very close to them, and that's how one of them. One of the members there was the one who let me one million yen. Mm. So I guess they were like uh, my wife's uh, adopted parents, okay. since my wife's parents didn't disown her at first. Okay. Oh, because of the marriage. Yeah. Oh, okay. But they didn't really disown her because they still kept in contact. They just didn't have anything to, to do with me. They didn't see my son for the first five years of his life. But then. When they finally met him, then I, would, I was just thinking, what well, was a big deal? Because they just loved him so. Mm -hmm. just, just a waste of five years, that's all. Okay, wow. So you opened the shop, right? Uh, your friends believed in you, and they were Japanese people. Um, Japanese people invested in, in you as well. But your wife's um, parents, I guess because of just the cultural difference and maybe preconceived notions, they weren't too sure about the, the, the um, relationship. Just my wife's parents. I was still mm -hmm. close with my wife's sister. And, uh, I, and then I, I mm. met my, my wife's aunts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So apart from that, the community, was this the first place that you opened this shop or was it in a different location? No, it was always, always here. Okay, so how did the community embrace you when you first opened your doors here? Well, because of the Saturday school, the mothers, they were like my volunteer workers here mm -hmm. at first. Okay. And they put flyers in, in, uh, in doorways. And it was a lot of mothers. So that's how I came to this area. And that's why I'm known in Nakamaku. How did the Japanese respond to the cakes and, and the things that you made? Well, they responded favorably. I mean, there was never any... Uh, no, they just liked it. Yeah. They just I mean, liked I mean... Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come in after 20, 25 years and, I, and, and say, and they're surprised that I'm still in business. And, and, and I say to them, why well, wouldn't I be in business? Yeah. I mean, I, but I mean, they're shocked that I'm selling the, the same five things that I was selling 30 years ago. Okay. So, yeah. What would you credit for your longevity for being here that, that long? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I suppose because I, I love baking, yeah. The one thing that I always tell people that if the business fails, then you just start something else. Mm -hmm. You're not a failure just because the business failed. Mm -hmm. You're not a failure. So why Japan? Like what got you interested in Japan in the first place? I went to a sushi restaurant for the first time. Mm -hmm. Woke up the next day in my heart and in my, in my heart, mm -hmm. I just wanted to learn about Japan. I was... 19, I suppose, and at that time, I didn't question those kind of things. Mm -hmm. When something like that happened, I never questioned it. I just, I just followed it. It mm -hmm. could have just as easily been, I could have easily gone to an African restaurant, but I went to a Japanese restaurant, and then it happened. Mm -hmm. I never asked myself why. I mean, I know exactly when, but I don't 
know why I never thought about it. For like nine years, I was telling people mm -hmm. I'm going to move to wow. Japan. And, and then, I mean, I came here with only $300, which mm -hmm. ran out very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was worried about, the only thing on my mind was getting thrown out of the country. Not how to eat or find a job. I wasn't worried about yeah. that. I just didn't want to get thrown wow. out of the country, that's all. Money ran out very, very quickly in the first three weeks. So I called my father for some, to ask him for a loan, and he lent me uh, $5,000. But then one of my jobs in New York City, they had profit sharing, mm -hmm. which I didn't even know about. Okay. And I knew there was some money coming to me, and then when that money came, it turned out to be uh, $1,500. And this was when the exchange must have been in like almost 300 yen. Okay. Yeah, so it was good. And then after that came, I was in no hurry to look for a job. Although my Japanese girlfriend at that time, she was trying to pressure me into getting any kind of job. Mm -hmm. And I half-heartedly looked, but I was never really interested mm -hmm. in, in working. I mean, I just wanted to live here. But yes, I did work eventually. I teaching English as almost everybody does here. But. Mm -hmm. During my obsession in New York City, my circle of friends were Japanese, and I had a Japanese girlfriend. So mm -hmm. when I came here, they introduced people. They, there were people here waiting for me, waiting for me okay. to, to help me out. So it's not like I just jumped here and didn't know anybody. I knew mm -hmm. people, yeah. What about the language? Was that a, a barrier when you first came? Not when I first came, because I was studying Japanese in the States. Okay. Although my wife and children now are embarrassed by my Japanese, and whenever I'm, I'm whenever I'm on TV, they say I speak so bad that they're yeah. embarrassed. <laughs> okay, but you you, you got around back then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what are some of your product offerings here? So every day I make carrot cake, cheesecake, banana bread, and brownies. And usually, besides that, sometimes I make applesauce spice or zucchini bread. On Saturday, when there's more foot traffic, I make those plus pies, generally cherry pie, pecan pie, and apple pie. But my policy is, two days in advance, you can order anything you want, from a slice to a small bag of cookies. Most of the things that I make, I never tasted in the States. When I say authentic American recipes, mm -hmm. cakes, I mean, I follow the recipe. I'm not necess I've not necessarily tasted mm -hmm. any what I make in the States. Okay. So they may be sweeter, but I didn't really change. I didn't change any of my recipes to make them less sweet for the Japanese. Is there one lesson that you learned in Japan that, you know, over the 36 years that you could impart uh, to people watching, like one lesson? Persevere. Mm. Persevere. I mean, uh, I don't know what, what's, what's luck or what's happened since. I mean, things happen to me. Maybe they don't happen mm. these days. I mean, when, when I had my first... My first good English teaching job, I was actually teaching in junior high school. Okay. And I don't have a, a university degree at all, so I shouldn't have been able to, to do that. But okay. I still got the job. Okay. But I, at that time, I told people, the longer you're here in Japan, the wider your circle of Japanese friends are, the more work you'll get because you just have a, a wider range of people. But mm -hmm. things just happen. I mean, I was teaching in a public school, and just one time I was on the... Uh, subway train and I was sitting next to the superintendent of schools when <laughs> we just it just it just happened that's all yeah so like what has your black experience been like you know being black in Japan like has it changed over the years I don't think so yeah no no but I, but I mean I'm uh, hasn't changed but I became more involved with black people after I came here oh how so? Because I, because I, when I was in the States, I only worked. I mean, I worked two full-time jobs, and I didn't really go out that much. And then when I came here, I met blacks from all over, all over the, the States, mm -hmm. from the West Coast especially. And I mean, some of the things they told me about the West Coast, I never heard about. I mean, in uh, New York, I mean, you can walk any place. I mean, no policeman's going to stop you because you're walking in this neighborhood, not in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your, your black experience in America at that time was very positive, you would say? Yeah, because I was insulated. It, when it, before I left home, mm -hmm. I was very insulated because I have 53 first cousins. Mm -hmm. 45 lived in the same town. Okay. So my family was all around me. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there is racism, but my family was a buffer. And when you came to Japan, you never experienced 
racism not overt no okay maybe because I'm, I'm the kind of person who doesn't care but I mean mm -hmm. it never if, if it didn't bother me then it would never register to me mm -hmm. I mean of, of course mm -hmm. when I when I saw May with my kids that registered but I mean it never something with me it would never bother me no Okay, so Ijime has been bullying, right? Yeah. So did your kids experience a lot of that coming up? I thought that they did, but my wife is, keeps telling me that I'm misremembering. So. <laughs> what did they say, your kids? What did they say about their experience in school? But when they got bullied, I mean, of, of course, she would go to the school administration from day one and put her foot down. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have to do that or else it will, it will keep happening. But my kids have always been... Uh, what I used to call many leaders. They were like the leaders in the group. Mm -hmm. When my son was in elementary school and the Japanese girls were getting bullied by other guys, they would go to my son for help with the police. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he was like a leader in that respect. You have four kids, yeah, right? Was there anything that you taught them particularly that you think um, gave them that character? They're culturally Japanese, but I always tell them. Mm -hmm. When somebody sees you, they're going to see your dark skin first. So you're always going to, going to be, be black. Yeah. Any advice for other parents who have, like, you know, mixed kids in Japan? Just love them. I mean, I don't know how it is now, but, but, but back then I would, I would meet black fathers, black American fathers who could not even speak Japanese and their kids couldn't speak English. So there was no communication no. at all. Okay. I never spoke Japanese to my kids. I, well, they thought that I could not speak Japanese. I only spoke English because I wanted them to learn English. Mm -hmm. And from day one, from the from when they were first born, my wife read to them in Japanese. I read to them in English. Sometimes mm -hmm. the same book. Mm -hmm. That instilled in my kids a love of reading, which they love to, to this day. Mm -hmm. That's important. I have had Japanese workers on and off, but not in the last 15 years. Any advice for other black people who want to come to Japan, right? Any advice for them? Sure. If you really want to come, mm -hmm. just come, that's all. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's not as easy as it was when I first came here, because I just came on and hopped on a plane mm -hmm. and came. But I was 27. I should have been more adventurous when I was younger. But I was, but my goal when I was 19 was to move to New York City. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be my dream until I got obsessed with Japanese culture. Now, Tokyo is my, is my number one city. If you have a dream, just follow it. Don't, have, don't let anybody dissuade you. If you're young enough, you can do almost anything. Mm. And if you fail, try something else, that's all. You seem to have really good relationships with Japanese people. Uh, is there anything that you've learned or anything that you can pass on to other foreigners um, to have a similar sort of like uh, relationship with Japanese people. Just be open. That's all. Don't don't uh, have any preconceived ideas about the Japanese. I meet people who are here, but they complain about it all the time, and I wonder why you stay here then. Mm. Yeah. My first year, the first time I was published in uh, the Japan Times, foreigners all over Japan, they mm. were like calling me and like congratulating me. And I think people thought it was much harder for a foreigner to open a business in Japan. Maybe it was hard. Maybe mm. my wife did everything. I don't know. What's one of the best and worst experiences you've had in all your 36 years in Japan? I can't think of worst experiences. I, maybe I just don't think about those kind of things. Uh, what about the best experience? Best experience. One off. I, I guess I have to say meeting my wife. <laughs> so. Where did you meet your wife? At Jaffa, Japan Afro-American Friendship Association. Okay, and was that in your first year, or second year in Japan? I mean, that was my first year. Okay. I mean, I, I met her within uh, three months, and we got married within six months, probably. Okay, and you've been married for over 30 years? 36 years. Oh, wow. Congrats. How has COVID affected business? It made it busier. I mean, I, I asked my wife, I mean, I, I thought, Cakes would be the last thing that people wanted, but then she said people are being more local. They're not traveling as much. Uh, she also said maybe it's a comfort food, but I always, I, I never think about Japanese having comfort foods, but I guess maybe it is. Where can people find you online? Kyle'sGoodFinds.com. So Kyle, thank you so much for your time. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Until next time.
Bye for now.